What is going on guys? Lethal Flux here back again with a brand new video. It's been three motherfucking months and I'm gonna be on a roll. I'm, I'm hopefully gonna be returning to the YouTube scene or the Yugi tube scene and I'm gonna try to crack some videos out. My ultimate goal is to uh, to get up to 10,000 subscribers and I'm gonna try to make that happen. Um, I'm gonna stay consistent. I'm gonna try to upload three times a week. Hopefully that's enough for you guys. If it's not, let me know in the comments section below. Be sure to like the video, share the video, comment on the video, and do whatever you can to get Lethal Flux up to 10,000 subscribers. I just, it's, it's, uh, it's just been tough, man. I've been working seven days a week, and I've had barely any time for Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I found some time, so we're going to get right into the video. Today, we're going to be deck profiling Infernoids, as you can tell. we got Deviati on the front right here, and, uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get into the deck profile. No more stalling. All right, so, uh... For the really big guys, we got mommy and daddy, called Deviati and Onansu. So, um, <clears throat> Onansu, when you special summon, you, you gotta banish three, um, to summon it. Banish three Inferno monsters to summon it. And, um, when he's summoned, he's got the optional effect of destroying all monsters on the field. Um, also, uh, when a spell trap card is activated, you can tribute a monster on the field to negate the spell or trap card and banish it. Pretty good. During either player's turn, that is. And then you got Deviati, who is the ex same exact thing as, uh, Anunsu, you gotta banish three to summon it. <clears throat> and um, this destroys all spell and traps. So it's really good in the Cliff War matchup, which is one of the deck's worst matchups, I think. And uh, tribute a monster to negate monster effects and banish the monster, which is really good. So those are the two big guys. Let's go into the ones that we play three of. We play three Atondel and three Sightsimus. Um <clears throat> Each of the Infernoids, the big guys, have the effect to where uh, during the player's turn you can tribute a monster to uh, target a card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. This comes really handy in a lot of matchups. Uh, Necroz and uh, Tellers and sometimes Burning Abyss um, especially. Um, so the, for these guys you gotta banish two. And they also have other effects. So both of them have the, the banishing effect from the grave. This guy when he attacks over a monster and sends it to the graveyard he can attack once again in a row and that's big because if you can uh, see down there if you already know he's a huge 2800. And this guy is really good too. He's a level 7. You can make your Draco sacks big guys with him. Um, when he attacks a monster, just attacks a monster, doesn't have to send it to the grave. Um, you can uh, banish a card on your opponent's side of the field during the end of the battle phase. And what's important about this is that it does not target, um, <clears throat> which is awesome. So, uh, if they okay to the effect, you banish their shit. And um, <laughs> if uh, Cliff Wars has Sacrifice equipped, um, it, it's awesome because it doesn't have to send the card to the graveyard, just has to attack the monster, or um, you know, it'll go to the pendulum zone, but you'll still get the effect to banish, either way, so yeah, those are the big guys, you gotta banish two to summon each of those guys, let's get on to the little guys, we've got three Infernoid, ugh, Infernoid Patrulia, and three Harmatic, um, these guys you gotta just banish one, um, from the hand or graveyard for all these guys, sorry, should've said that before, um, banish one Infernoid monster, and when he's special summoned, or when he's, uh, whatever, <laughs> once per turn, <laughs> you can, uh, pop a spell or trap card on your opponent's side of the field, um, and these guys with the little guys, you can, uh, during your opponent's turn, you can tribute a monster to, uh, banish a card in your opponent's graveyard. And Harmatic, he's, uh, he's okay, um, he's good for Dante, that's the main reason, is he's a level 3 and he's good for Dante, he's also another name, um, I'd imagine when Decatron comes out, the new support next set, that he's, he might be getting cut to two, but this is really good, I like that still, um, but he's good, he pops monsters, and you just gotta banish one of someone, and like I said, he's a level three for Dante, so that's all those, let's get into the ones we play two of, we play two Entra, and two for Maze, um, Entra bounces a face-up monster on your opponent's side of the field, he's also got 2,000 defense, so you can kind of just sit there on him if your opponent can't get over him, and, um, these guys, you also have to ban just banish one. And Permaze targets a set card on the field and uh, shuffles it into the deck. And your opponent cannot respond with that set card uh, to the activation of this. It's kind of like a Night Beam, so they kind of have to chain around it if they want to activate the card that you've targeted. Um, but it's really good. You can uh, even do their, their monsters and sit and shit, because it's just a set card. So, yeah. That's all for the Infernoid monsters. I believe there's 19 total, something like that. Something big, so you can get all those names in the graveyard. Let's get on to the Lightsworn Engine, because right now you do play Lightsworn Engine. You got two Raiden, 
two Lumina and the one Lila. Um, like I said, I think Cliff Forge is the worst matchup, so you do kind of have to play this. This is good for their getting rid of their Pendulum Scales and stuff. Lumina is all obviously good because you get the Raiden back, and Raiden is good because it gets your milling on. It's uh, pretty much just a, you mill four. <laughs> so um, that's the Light Sworn Engine. We'll play a couple searchers for those as well. And for the last monster, one Piro Piro Cerberus. If you guys don't know what this little guy does, uh, when you take damage um, by your opponent's card, <clears throat> or if you take damage by battle or by an opponent's card effect, while this card is in the graveyard, banish this card from your graveyard and destroy one card in the field. Um, <clears throat> and yes, it does target. But this is good for the gin lock. Um, it's a good main deck out for the gin lock, and that's why I play it. It's also a level three. So yeah, it's uh, it's decent. I like it a lot for the gin lock. Let's get on to the spells. You got the obligatory triple reasoning one monster gate. This card is busted. Um, for the deck, it's not a busted card in general, but for this deck, it's actually really good. Um, for those of you guys that don't know reasoning, uh, you excavate cards from the top of your deck until you hit a declared level that your opponent has declared. Um, until you hit a normal summoned, a normal summonable card. And if it's the level that your opponent declared, it goes to the graveyard. If it's a level other than that, it gets special summoned. So that's really good. Monster Gate's the same thing, except for you tribute a monster and your opponent does not declare a, a level. So basically, until you hit a monster that's normal summonable, special summon it by tributing a monster. Really good. And those cards are really uh, essential for the deck. And let's get on to some searchers. We got two reinforcement of the army. This grabs your Raiden and your Aaron, which you do play in the uh, the side deck because Aaron's good for the gin lock. Um, so yeah, until next format, I don't know what's going to happen then, but right now we do play the two Raiden. Uh, to search your other Light Swarms, or even Raiden if you like, you play two charges of the Light Brigade. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, get your milling going, searches your Luminas, Lilas, and Raidens, and Aaron if you need it. Some back row destruction, we got two Galaxy Cyclone. Um, this isn't absolutely necessary, but it does help game one during the Clifford matchup. For when they're not siding Imperial Iron Walls or Necro Valleys, or even maining them, I don't know. Uh, but this card's really good. Um, I usually do side it out because Imperial Iron Wall will be coming in. Um, in game two, so you can't banish when Imperial Iron Wall is on the field, so there's no point in keeping it in. But it's really good game one against Cliff Forts and against the other things. I play two Book of Eclipse. Um, this is good in two ways. Uh, it gets rid of the Gin Lock, and it also flips your guys face down to reset your levels. So if you don't know what I mean by that, each of the Infernoid monsters cannot be special summoned if the combined levels or and ranks you control are eight or higher. Effect monsters, of effect monsters. So this flips them face down to where you control zero levels and you can summon all your stuff and then flip them face up and there you go, you got four Infernoid monsters ready to beat your opponent down. But this can be used um, offensively and defensively, like I said, it gets rid of the gin lock and it's all around just a solid card. I think, I, I really like it. Double Void Seer. Um, this card's really good, it's a quick play spell. Uh, target one for your monster you control, it's unaffected by your opponent's card effects until the end of, uh, of the turn, which is really good. And then when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to um, negate destruction of uh, one of your Infernoid monsters by a card effect for, uh, for that turn. So yeah, pretty good. Um, Void Seer, that one is. And then I decided main deck, uh, one Dark Hole, one Regeki. This is strictly for Jin Lock and stuff, and I hate that I have to just play these for the Jin Lock, but... It's also good in other matchups, but that's the main reason is Necroz is one Dark Hole, one Regeki, because that's the big deck right now. Let's get on into the extra deck. So that's the main deck. If you notice, there was no traps. There's 40 cards, zero traps, um, no monsters and spells, but there are traps in the side deck, so we'll get into that soon. For the extra deck, you got the three three Harlier tokens. I just got those, so I got to show them off. They're pretty cool. Uh, one Dante and one um, Alucard for the threes. Obviously, Dante, you play... Uh, Piro Piro Cerberus, Harmatic, and um, uh, Lumina for those uh, these rank threes. Uh, Alucard I don't really go into a lot. I might cut him, but Dante is really good for your um, getting damage in, and he's rank three, so it's really good for uh, counting your levels towards um, your uh, Infernoids, so you only control three. Rank fours, Gem Knight Pearl. Like I said before, if the combined levels of ranks um, and combined rank and level you control of effect monsters is uh, Eight or higher, um, or higher than eight, you cannot special summon Inferno monsters. But this is not an effect monster. Um, the Gemini Pearl, he's just a big bead stick. So when you summon him, um, your total levels count toward are, are zero towards your Inferno special summons. So that's how people play Gemini Pearl. Uh, one X Cyton, um, good against Klee and everything else. Uh, Castell, these are pretty self-explanatory. And Lavalval Chain, you can send whatever you want, Piro Piro Cerberus or whatever. Uh, for the rank sevens, that's all for the rank fours. One big guy, one Draco sack. These are for Sightsmiths. Um, 
Big Eye's really good. I actually recently uh, was playing the mirror match and Big Eye, someone's Big Eye to take their uh, Atondal and then tributed for uh, <laughs> um, Vanity's Fiend or something like that. I don't know. It was pretty cool. I don't know, but you do have to play these. I, I go into this a lot. Um, this I do go into, but not as often as this. They're just both really good. You should play both of them. For the Synchros, one Armadis, and uh, for the five and for the six, one Goyo Guardian. Don't go into these quite often, but they're there just in case you need to. Uh, for the sevens, you do play a lot of sevens. One Michael. This is actually, I don't know if you can see, it's Clearwing Synchro Dragon. There it is, right? Oh, it's kind of hard. There it is. Clearwing Synchro Dragon. Uh, one Black Rose Dragon. One Scrap Watch Like I said, it's not an effect monster, so it's good. And one Crimson Blader. My battery's running low. I'm going to try to get it going here. And for the side deck, two Vanity's Fiend. Um, I don't really like these because if you hit them off reasoning, they stay in the graveyard because they can be normal summoned, but they cannot be special summoned. Um, I'd rather play two more, uh, two spell cancelers, but I only have one in here, so. Two, two Chaos Hunter. Good in the mirror match and good against Necroz. So, yeah. One Aaron, searchable with Rhoda. Two Trap Eater, good against, uh, Klee. Sorry if I'm going really fast, my battery's dying. Good against Klee for lose a turn and stuff like that. And, uh, Macro Cosmos. Uh, one Spell Canceler. One Jinzo. This is the MVP of the side deck, I personally think. Two MST for Klee. Two Breakthrough Skill. Um, not main decked anymore. Uh, it was main decked, but I took it off for Regeki Dark Hole. And Fiend Griefing, because, uh, <laughs> good for the mirror match and Infernoids. Um, all they're, they're all Fiends, so you can send one to the graveyard. Um, and it's good against Necros and Burning Abyss and the mirror match, like I said, and Tellers especially. Um, so yeah, that has been the Infernoid deck profile, and I did mention, uh, I haven't mentioned, but I've actually went undefeated with this deck a lot at Locals. Um, it's a really solid deck, and I encourage you guys to try it out. It's really good against the meta. It's a meta destroyer, I personally think. Um, there's just not enough people playing it. So go try the deck out. Tell me what you guys think of the deck and comment in the section down below. Thank you so much for watching the video. Sorry it's been three months without a video, and I will talk to you guys later. Take it easy.